Hey everybody, what's up? It's Gillian Monster, and I'm back. And um, with this uh, most recent Kerbal Space Program video, I wanted to do something perhaps a little, um, a little something I don't do quite as often, which is basically kind of like a, a how-to demonstration of how to fly something. Um, you'll see all over YouTube that there are these videos about people, you know, how to fly a space plane, how to build a vertical takeoff and landing, which I've actually done as well. Um, but uh, this one is actually very specific to this particular vehicle. Uh, probably over about the last week or so, uh, I have been building basically a variation of my prior build, a uh, of the Rhino armored personnel carrier from the Warhammer 40,000 series. And what this one, what this one is, is called the. Uh, it's basically a Space Marine Vindicator. Basically, it takes the uh, the Rhino's uh, chassis and it actually adds, you know, some extra features so that way it can fulfill a different role other than uh, armored personnel transportation. Um, so. Basically, obviously, you know, start off with the biggest, uh, the biggest change is this slab right here in front, the seed shield. And essentially what the, uh, the it's part of the, uh, the Vindicator's function, which is to, when the Space Marines, say, invade a city or a heavily fortified structure, um, the chapter that they, you know, their chapter typically contains about a dozen of these vehicles, and they'll take them with into like urban settings and they'll use them to essentially destroy enemy infested buildings like they won't send space marines in at all except to uh you know maybe clear the rubble afterwards make sure there's no survivors basically what this thing does it is a building killer and it is also um pardon me uh it is also uh designed to destroy large slow heavily armored targets okay and the main uh the main way it does this is by using uh, what is called a demolisher cannon. Basically, it's this thing kind of in the cutout of the shield. It's a large bore, short range artillery piece that fires a, a pretty substantial artillery shell. You can kind of see this thing plugged in, plugged in its uh, its casing right now. So the uh, barrel actually does come preloaded. We decided to download this, and uh, as well as um, the one that it has in the barrel, uh, I've also devised a reloading system within the interior of the vehicle. Now that is uh, the basically kind of like why I wanted to do this how-to. Uh, so essentially, it is it drives just like any normal tank. I've also retained the uh, the loading ramps. I've also given it a couple of tow hooks here in the back. So I'll go ahead and pick. Come on, pick them up. There we go. And go ahead and pick those hatches up. And uh, in order to drive this thing around, you can't really drive, unfortunately, the, the physics don't allow it in Kerbal Space Program, you can't really drive around with a seed shield down. You can, but it has to be like perfectly flat ground. So I'll go ahead and pick the seed shield up. It also raises the barrel, so that way there's no clipping. And get this thing rolling. Uh, one of the main features that I have for pretty much um, all of my Warhammer 40,000 builds is that I want to give them as much of kind of like the I guess in-universe equipment as possible. So you'll notice that this thing has four smokestacks, uh, two on either side of the uh, the chassis, and I actually have four engines uh, with for each one, just like they do in the Warhammer universe. So I've actually got uh, APUs and get those rolling. I've also have uh, some upsized fuel cells and uh, uh, extensive battery system. So I'll go ahead and open this resource panel here. You can see how quickly the liquid fuel is draining and I actually have the APU slave to the throttle so it's actually uh, pretty fuel efficient has a pretty decent range considering its use so what we're going to be um, shooting at today why is my huh that's interesting I didn't realize I had two cameras on the main hatch um well whatever redundancy right um what we're going to be shooting at today is the uh the astronaut or the Kerbinaut, rather, um, they're basically kind of like their barracks, and uh, I'm just going to be using that as an example. Now, uh, just a key note of warning, the uh, small high explosive warhead's blast radius is actually pretty substantial. It also packs quite a bit of force, so um, you basically need to, you know, in the in the game, or rather in the uh, in the Warhammer universe, this thing can drive right up to a building and basically fire its uh, its cannon point blank, and you know not have to worry about it now i'd say this is this is pretty close this is close enough uh and also in keeping with the uh, in universe ideas um i've also given this thing substantially more armor plating so much so that it winds up being a full seven tons heavier at a max of 27 tons uh versus the rhinos only 20 at least within the uh I'll go ahead and shut those off now since they're pretty much at full power um so now that we're in position we'll go ahead and, go and drop the shield
Now, uh, I've actually had the BD Armory Weapons Manager uh, still attached to this vehicle as kind of a holdover from the uh, the Rhino. I just kind of left it on there, you know, just in case you want to add something else, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but you'll notice that there are no actual BD Armory weapons on this vehicle. I'll go ahead and shut that off, actually. Um, but uh, one of the things that you can use it for is the FLIR targeting ball that I mounted uh, directly above the main, the main cannon. So, basically, you can... Uh, use it to target buildings, you can check distance, like uh, right now we're sitting at about 129 meters. I'm actually going to go ahead and let the brakes go and back this puppy up just a little bit. Back it up to about 150 meters. Okay, cool. So now that we're still, um, go ahead and reset that. There we go, we'll target the front door. You know, never a better way to enter the building than through the front door. We'll go ahead and uh, lock the brakes, uh, shut the nav all off because we don't need it anymore, shut BD armory off because we, we also don't need that anymore. Go ahead and give the barrel just a slight up tilt. Uh, the barrel, the seed shield is controlled uh, via numbers 4 and 5. 5 resets everything to center. 4 lifts it up like that. That's number 4. That's number 5. And then I also have uh, action groups 2 and 3 slave to the barrel elevation. So 2 is up and 3 is down. So we'll go ahead and lift that up just a little bit. And that should be that should be okay. So um, everything's all good. Uh, you can see I've already got the staging all together. So you literally just fire. You partially fire and partially reload with the space bar. So... Uh, everything's loaded, and we'll go ahead and give this a shot. And it is capable of taking out very large targets with extreme prejudice. Okay, so for the next segment, we're going to go ahead and pop the brakes again. Get this puppy moving. Start up the APUs again. And you got to be careful when driving this, like uh, in my Rhino uh, and Hydra. Oh, there's a there's a, a part of it right there. Um, in my Rhino and my Hydra demonstration video, I showed the Rhino basically jumping off of the vehicle assembly launch pad uh, and landing pretty successfully. Now, because of the sheet shield, this can't do that. Um, also, because it's so much heavier, I wouldn't do it. Granted, uh, this thing, uh, the tracks are have can take a max load of about 70 tons, so this thing is nowhere near it. But I just like to have that uh, that margin of error just in case. So not only that, but I mean this thing that there's you know it's already similar enough to a Rhino with uh, with the seat shield. So we'll go ahead and hit the brakes. Next thing we're going to be doing is taking out the vehicle assembly building. Now to do that, uh, we'll go ahead and shut off the uh, APUs. Oops. Wanting to switch to the right camera. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. There's there's the internals. So, uh, in addition to having an actual functional artillery shell, this thing actually has functional reloading mechanisms as well. So we'll go ahead and reset the cannon to center. We'll go ahead and drop the nav ball because we don't need it. And uh, the first and most important part is uh, the gantry crane. So we'll go ahead and get it over here so just so that way you guys can see it. Um, move the mouse out of the way too. Literally all this thing is is attached to a gantry crane up above this uh, armor panel right here and um, the uh, the magnets on there as well as the light are slave to uh, button number seven so that way uh, you can actually know when the magnets are active and when they're not active. So we'll go ahead and the uh, the actually main gantry is slave to uh, keys I and K. Uh, K moves it backwards, I moves it forwards. Go ahead and, and I, I made it slow intentionally. Now I also uh, pre uh, pre set up its limits, so you don't have to worry about overstressing things too much. That being said, still be careful. Now um, the breach itself has to be open to load the rounds, of course. And I have slaved um, the control of the breach to keys Q and E. So basically, if you typically steer by keyboard, you would be using the roll keys to open uh, the breach, to open and shut the breach. So that's closed and that's open. And um, there's actually a piston attached to the breach uh, that allows it to open up wide enough to where the round can actually be loaded. So since I have everything already properly staged over here on the left of the screen, we'll go ahead and hit the space bar. 
and you'll hear the uh, the magnets latch onto the uh, the magnets latch onto the, um, the casing. Move it forward. Now, for the first round or so, you have to be careful just because you have this extra round up here. So we'll go ahead and lift up the round and very carefully load it into the breech. I suppose you could use um, Infernal Robotics to um, there we go. Uh, Infernal Robotics to do the uh, the dirty work of actually having. Okay, gotta be easy. There we go. Uh, uh, you could use the Infernal Robotics sequencer to make a a more automated thing, but in order to do that, I would have had to free up some uh, keyboard strokes, and that would um, that would just take away from some of the detail. So I'll go ahead and shut the magnets off. Go ahead and drop the uh, the crane, which is uh, controlled with U uh, keys Uniform and Juliet. If you speak phonetic alphabet, that's U and J. Go ahead and back it up. Go ahead and finish closing the breech. And that's actually a uh, sweeper arm to keep uh, any excess debris that comes out of the breech uh, away from the gantry crane. So everything's all closed. We'll go ahead and switch out the camera back to normal. And obviously we're not really going to have to, you know, at this point, the the pitch doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and double check their, their staging. So since the, um, the vehicle building is a generous target, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just fire away here. And of course, all the debris falls to the ground. So this is definitely effective in what I designed it to do, and what actually it is designed to do within the Warhammer universe. I can't say that I designed it, because I didn't. So I'll go ahead and pop the brakes again. Now the reason why I wanted to fire two shots from this thing is to demonstrate the final part of the reloading mechanism. Now with the first round actually loaded in the chamber, you know, that kind of, that kind of removes the need to demonstrate this, but I just wanted to do it anyway. We'll go ahead and open that up. And if you press action group 1, this is what happens. Clipping aside. It moves it to, it moves it at the, uh, it moves the rototron at the back in increments of 60 degrees. So that way, basically, you press number 1, and it'll already line up, um, line up the, the shell towards the gantry crane. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open this up. Okay, I don't know what that got caught on. 
considering it did it. But either way, that's you just got to be careful about uh, when you drive this thing, so mistakes can happen. Um, but anyway, uh, I really hope that actually helps you guys um, pilot this thing successfully. Um, and I hope you enjoy many, many rounds of destroying the Kerbal Space Center. So uh, see you all in the actual kind of show-off video.